Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360 Live from our news hub here at Adesau in Kandakra. Thanks for joining us. My name is Parkwesi Asari. And my name is Aisha Yakubu. Top of the bulletin this evening. Civil society groups petition parliament to initiate processes to halt plans to mine bauxite in Itiwa Forest and under Sino Hydro deal. Also tonight, 800 nation builders call trainees to be fully employed by Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority after three year engagement under the scheme. On mission tonight, Bone Health Center to receive a facelift after a mission Ghana report on challenges of facility. Parliamentarians wish Black Stars well as 2019 African Cup of Nations kickstarts tonight. And on the international front, U.S. President says he called off strikes on Iran after being told 100 people will die. We've got the very latest details of all these stories, plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. You can visit any of our social media pages. We are very active on Facebook and on Twitter. Our handle is TV3GH. Right, so a group in Nigeria, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, has jumped to the defense of Nigerian professor Augustine Nwagbara. This follows the dismissal of the University of, by the University of Education Winneba on Thursday. There is more in the following news Dex report. The statement signed by the group's branch chairman at the University of Lagos, Dele Ashiru, expresses reservations about how Professor Nwagbara's issue has been handled. It says the views expressed by the Nigerian professor should have been viewed purely within the context of academic freedom. The group quotes Articles 3 and 4 of the Kampala Declaration on Intellectual Freedom and Social Responsibility to back its argument. Those provisions, according to the statement, protect African intellectuals from harassment, persecution and intimidation on the basis of opinion or nationality. The Academic Staff Union of Universities in Nigeria further calls on authorities of the UEW and relevant government agencies to ensure the safety of Professor Magbara's life and property. It cautions strongly that, should anything happen to him, both the UEW and the government of Ghana would be held responsible. The group is also quick to add that Ghana and Nigeria's relations hangs in the balance as a result of this development. Now, 40% of recruits on the Nation Builders Corps at the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority will be employed after a three-year period. According to the management of the Customs Excise and Preventive Service, it has taken the decision to employ them after realizing that the assisted serves to mobilize more than 30% of its revenue. A total of 2,000 NAPCO trainees are currently engaged by the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Customs intends to employ some of the recruits after a three-year period. NAPCO recruits have been harboring fear. They may exit the scheme without jobs after the three-year service period. They again argued that they would not be able to replicate the training after they have exited. We actually expected the government to put in much measures to at least add on to the program. Most of us will be absorbed because after the three years, we can't just go back and be um, searching for jobs again. So we're very glad if after the program will be absorbed and be maintained into the system. NAPCO is, is moving on right and we are all enjoying it, whatever thing is going on now. And we are hoping that the promises that they have set now they will surely fulfill it. Promises like what? Like at the end of the period we are going to be employed. But the Assistant Commissioner of Service, Usman Abib, is assuring 40% of them will be employed after the three-year period. He said the recruits have demonstrated commitment and will push for their employment. About 40% of them will be employed. Believe to us and the Customs Division, of course, we recognize that we have quite an aging population. And most of us are about exiting. Clearly, they are coming to take these vacancies. And they are doing very well. They have been disciplined, involved in operations, I mean, clearly take instructions. 
the chief executive officer of NAPCO, Dr. Ibrahim Anyas, was elated about the decision and asked the NAPCO trainees to work hard. It's meant to say that I just take these people, uh, even if they were not uh, up to the task. Uh, so they have to themselves justify uh, their value. Uh, and you've heard the assistant commissioner. The report we get consistently is that uh, the NAPCO trainees have made a lot of valuable contribution uh, to the revenue base uh, in a positive way to an extent that they feel that uh, if they had their own way almost instantaneously, they would uh, regularize them uh, so that other people can get through the scheme. Meanwhile, there are concerns about delays in the payment of monthly stipends. But the CEO says March and April have been paid and will soon begin the payment of May. He, however, want district heads to stop illegal charging of fees from recruits. What we're saying is that the trainees, as presented, they are talking about those local arrangements, and we need to investigate that that is actually the case. Uh, but the position of the Secretariat is that the cloth is for free. What we insist on is that trainees must wear the NAPCO cloth for Mondays uh, and then uh, for Fridays. A medical doctor at the St. Jo Joseph's Hospital in Kufuidria, David Kupualo, has appealed to government to speed up the process of procuring more ambulances to improve response time to emergencies. He made this known when the Catholic Bishop of Kufuidria, the Most Reverend Joseph Efrifai Jekum, visited the facility to sympathize and pray for survivors of an accident which occurred at Manyakrobo in the eastern region. 61 parishioners of St. Barbara Catholic Church, Akonsombo, including a six-month-old baby, were on board the VRA Daewoo bus when the accident occurred. The parishioners were returning to Akonsombo from Akimoda, where they had attended a funeral. Their vehicle reportedly failed its brakes while descending the Asite Mountains, somersaulted and ran into a ditch, killing seven persons in the process. 39 of the victims are receiving care at six health facilities, whilst 15 others had been discharged. A medical doctor of the St. Joseph's Hospital, Dr. David Kupualo, said the victim suffered fractures in the limbs. He expressed concern about the unavailability of ambulances at the health facilities in the country and entreated the public to be cautious in handling victims to avoid them losing nerve functions in the neck and arms. Majority of them are stable. We have two still at the emergency um, units. Um, and then at the female side where we are now, there are four of them here currently. Uh, we've moved one to the ward and currently as we speak, they are all in good condition and they are doing quite well. Uh, some of them are also being scheduled uh, to have surgery done later. Early transport to the referral centers could help with the management of the cases and minimize the damages that uh, could occur. But the whole thing is that we should be able to improve upon the ambulance system so that just at the point of the accident, we could have a number of them being transported early to the right places. The Catholic Bishop of Kofrodia, Most Reverend Joseph Afrifa Ajekum, visited the facilities to sympathize and pray for the victims who are parishioners of the Santa Barbara Catholic Church at Consombo. He requested government to equip the ambulance service whilst cautioning drivers to be careful on the road. There were only three ambulances and I think uh, we need really to work hard to get this because many more lives maybe could have been uh, saved. Let me use this occasion to advise all drivers in this country to be very, very circumspect and cautious when they drive. Welcome to Mission. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. The Pung Health Centre will soon get a theatre and a world complex. This is after Mission highlighted the infrastructural and logistical challenges facing the hospital. 
In March this year, TV3 aired a news item on the Thun Health Centre. Since its establishment 22 years ago, the health centre has not been upgraded. Inadequate staff and basic logistics hampered efforts at providing quality health care to patients. Authorities at the hospital wanted the health centre to be upgraded into a polyclinic status to serve the needs of residents in the Thun Katamansu municipality. Three months after the story aired, aid has come to the health center through the coastal development authority the health center will soon get a theater and a world complex time you came here we have seen some improvement in our municipality the first one is the Pon health center we have received the detailed drawings of a theater and a ward complex that would be built the building permit has already been granted EPA and Fire Service were here last week and they also did the environmental assessment. I have been told from the Municipal Chief Executive that any moment from now, the sword will be cut for the project. It's because we are in the rainy season, that is why it seemed to be delayed. But as soon as the rain settles, would have the project start. The municipal chief executive of Tunkata Manso highlighted the support given the health center by the assembly since the story aired on mission. We have been able to secure a contract from Coastal Development Authority to put up a theater and fence, finish it for the clinic. I've been able to secure an ambulance to add up to the services being run at the health centre. I've been able to donate with an NGO mattresses and other equipment for the health centre. So we've been, we are doing a lot to be able to stabilize the place. And that's all for Mission tonight. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks for watching. On MTN Video Report today, our citizen journalist Joseph Amo reports on abandoned ICT lab at Kwadaso NA School in the Ashanti region. This building is the computer lab built for Kwadaso Estate MA schools in 2014 under the UNDP Government of Ghana program. This computer lab is yet to be handed over to the school since its completion in 2014. Although pupils do not have a place to learn computing, investigations conducted shows that there is financial litigation between the contractor and KMA. The building which has not been used, is quickly depleting. It leaks, and the computers which are supposed to stock it never arrive. We implore the KME to speed up in settling any misunderstanding with the contractor. Hand over to the school for the people to get access to computers and a better place to learn ICT. This is coming from citizen journalist Joseph Amo, Kwadasu Estate, Kumase. Like Joseph, you can also send more of your video reports via WhatsApp number 551 433044. Right, I shall remember you're still watching News 360 live from our news hub here at, at Desau in Kanda Accra. We're streaming live on Facebook. If you feel strongly about any of our top stories this hour, you can feel free to uh, send us your views and comments on our social media pages on Facebook and on Twitter. We're we'll still ahead in the bulletin. We've got the very latest in business. Hello, Aldo. Very good evening and warm welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. Now, we start off uh, with Hyundai and uh, one of the world's leading automobile brands has unveiled 
two of their new models, uh, the all-new Sonata and the new flagship SUV, the Hyundai Palisade. Well, the event which saw key industry players drawn from mostly the Middle East and Africa was held in South Korea, home of Hyundai. Now, Ghana was represented by TV3 and Auto Plaza Limited, the official Hyundai vehicle distributors in Ghana. Right, so guys, welcome to Seoul, the capital of Korea. Yeah, this is the home of Hyundai. And uh, Auto Plaza, the major distributor or dealers, authorized dealers of Hyundai in Ghana, is making the trip possible for the crew from TV3 to join us right here. I mean, it's an amazing atmosphere right behind me. And what's the ambience here is the match talked about Hyundai Motor Studio Goyang. is the largest automobile theme park here in Korea, where you're taking through fun and exciting ways, especially business learning about how cars are manufactured and how they function and all that. We took a ride through the design, the finishing, and actually a 3D, no, 4D uh, feel of that ride. It was never racking, trust me. The new Palisade, the new Sonata. The new Sonata is so sporty, so low, wide, got some amazing lighting. And then at the other end, we've got this big, strong Palisade, four-wheel drive, loads of comfort for the whole family. But the design of both is unique. The design of both is standout, it's young, mm -hmm. it's dynamic, it's fresh, and it's sensuous. You almost want to close your eyes and rub your hands over the surfaces to feel the shapes of these cars. So for our market space, one thing a lot of people look at is the terrain. Yeah. Yes. How robust yeah. is the new design? Especially Get yourself a palisade. Mm. Get yourself a strong palisade. It's wider, got a big stance. Mm. You can see it's the king mm. of our range. Mm. We do have the new vehicle sales, and the, we do have slightly used vehicle sales, and we have the after sales department. We are uh, located at the Odoko Malam Road. Cameras, 60 kilometers per hour. All right, so uh, we are cruising to our next destination, and it's been a very busy morning, busy schedule for us. Auto Plaza Ghana is making sure that we firsthand experience the new Sonata 2020, uh, or the all new uh, eighth generation and die Sonata. Beautiful car. I know Aisha would love one. Giovanni has one. I will grab one more for myself. The new Palisade. Now, LMI Holdings and its flagship subsidiary, Enclave Power Company, has inaugurated the Dawa 330 kilovolt uh, substation developed to serve the electric power requirements of the Dawa Industrial City. The Dawa substation is the first bulk supply substation in the country to distribute power directly to consumers. LMI Holdings is a highly diversified Ghanaian conglomerate with a presence in the construction, land investment and development, real estate development, warehousing, logistics, utilities and ICT sectors in Ghana. It has demonstrated in full measure to innovate and deliver exceptional products, services and value in the face of challenging business environments in the third world setting. Minister for Trade and Industry Alan Chairman Singh said the project will maximize the potential for job creation and stimulate economic development. This project is going to play a major role in contributing to the creation of employment. I think the company needs also to be commended for this. So I can only hope that this new initiative of the African Union which is going to be adored first week in July, that Dawa will become the first gateway of Ghana into the continental free trade zone. Chief Executive Officer of LMI Holdings, Kojo Eduhine, urged local investors to locate their industries in enclaves that provide reliable supply of energy water and other infrastructural developments. We will be providing the infrastructure for estate developers to come. So we provide the road, the electricity, the central sewage treatment system, the drains and all of that. And then invite, uh, what you call it, uh, real estate development, uh, developers to come in here. 
So that's the whole idea. It is one of four regional industrial enclaves in Ghana with adjoining residential developments designed to position Ghana as a hub industrial activity in West Africa. Well, that's all for the very latest and business news. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Over to you, Aisha. Thank you, Paco. Now, in some more stories, the Save a Tiwa Coalition comprising environmental NGOs have vowed to resort to the courts in a bid to get government to rescind its decision to mine bauxite in the Tiwa Forest Reserve. During a march and presentation of a petition to Parliament, convener of the group, Daryl Bosu, maintained government could fulfill its obligations to the Sino Hydro without mining at Itiwa. Here's a report by Selom Amenya. The Save Etiwa Coalition and other civil society organizations embarked on a peaceful march in Accra to protest the mining of bauxite in the Etiwa forest. The group then proceeded to Parliament to present a petition to the legislators. Receiving the petition on behalf of Parliament, Majority Leader Osei Che Mensa Bunsu pledged to ensure their concerns are duly addressed. The issue about mining really is a matter that we should apply critical thinking to. We want development for our people. We want development for the country. And yet we all do know that development should also be structured in such a way that uh, development itself is sustainable. So resource should be sustainably used. The group insists mining of bauxite in commercial quantities could have dark consequences on the forest, which serves as home to some endangered wildlife and also as a source of water for most rivers across the country. One of the critical components of providing water services is watershed. At what forest is providing that particular service? Let's do a due diligence analysis. What will it take? to ensure that we do not destroy. Let us bear also in mind that bauxite mining is one of the most destructive industries. Well, and that's SF from today's edition. It continues and ends tomorrow for Accra. My name is Miriam Osei Ajuman. There's more news on 3news.com. Thanks very much, Miriam Osei Ajuman. I am black and proud. My name is Aisha Yakwa.